Vision of Adventure. Winter Fitness Class W01.11. The 20th of February, 2024. With Kath Finn. This is a recording of a live class so there will be conversation and chat between the participants during the class. For this class you will need a stationary bike with adjustable resistance. Your saddle needs to be set at a comfortable height. Ideally your knee will be slightly bent at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Please pause this recording if you need to adjust your bike. We will join the class recording in 10 seconds. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Evening everybody. The recording, as you've heard, is now in progress, so I'll do the evening's introductions. We have a good clan tonight, which is great. We can ride in a peloton through the Lake District. So we've got Linda and Liz and Jill and Jimmy and Molly and Sue from Scarborough and Diana. So um, I don't know what's happened to the singing. She normally sings, but I don't think oh. she can entertain us with singing tonight he's in the gym being quiet so. <laughs> well, normally goes to choir on a whatever oh, day that is. Is. so right this is i'm glad to see everybody's spinning along so you're all already starting to warm up it's nearly the end of sessions we've got this week and i think next week and then i think that's it and oh. i January has gone really slowly and February is disappearing in a, a puff of smoke. So, yes, Liz, woo, but then that means the weather's getting better and you should be able to Yay! get out of the <laughs> So, this evening, we're going to go on a ride again around um, to, from my house, just outside Kendall, to Staverley, and then Jill's probably ridden it up Kentmere. Not come here, not up come here. Up over Trout back and up Kirkston Pass, which is Oh not of, yet, not yet. I'm very excited. Oh, one of the big oh, climbs in the lakes. I just resurfaced it, so it should be fun. Ooh. Round <laughs> Oldswater and back over Shap Fell. Wow. So we've, done, we've done this before. Um, so we just change our style of riding to accommodate the road conditions that we're gonna meet. Um, How many miles? Hopefully that will be good. See what we can see. So we're going to all get on our bikes at my house, which you have done. Woo woo! And woo, I'm woo. excited because it's a beautiful day. We're, I'm lying, and we're going to go and see some amazing views, which is true. And we're going to ride some amazing uphills and downhills. Uh, and yeah, it's one of my favourite, Paddy and I's favourite rides. We try and do it. You only get a big ride now and again, so we only try and do it kind of once a year. How many miles is it, please? 56. Right, lovely. That's why I don't do it very often. Um, <laughs> but it takes about four hours normally. A bit okay. more? Yeah, a bit more. Four and a half. Depends so, on the cafe <laughs> stops. <laughs> now that's without the cafe stops. Don't worry, yeah. I'll put the cafe stops in. <laughs> but you can't stop in Stable if you're near the beginning. So we're going down my hill, which you might remember, it's a bit narrow, so we're not going to talk much because we've got to be in single <laughs> file. There's not great visibility and it's just nice and easy because we're setting off. The road's pretty scruddy, lots of mud and grit and stuff on it at the minute. Um, so we're going down there, past the house with the cats, past the house with all the scaffolding. Uh, he runs a good business and he's got lots of little ponies. And then down a really steep hill. Uh, we all need to put our brakes on and be really careful at the bottom because we join the main road and that's the A6 where cars go like 60, 70 miles an hour. So we're going to give way to them. We're going to wait for a nice gap to get us all out. And then we're on the A6. So we'll be pedalling along a nice kind of, we're just starting, so we won't go for 90 yet. We're still warming up. Nice kind of cadence. Uh, quite flat, good visibility so cars can see us move past us quite easily. Nice farmland, green fields, going towards Kendall, which is like medium-sized town, the old grey town. Oh. But we don't want to get in town. 
So we're all going to turn right. Okay, somebody's sound has disappeared. They're sending apologies. They are clearly can't shout loud enough in the wind. Ah, it's Diana. Thank you. Um, so does that mean she can't hear what we're saying? She said, she said it, um, when the recording went on, her uh, sound went off or something. I don't know why. I all. Uh, I'm going to answer that. So while I'm answering that, uh, we are going to continue to cycle along the side road that we've turned right into, and it's quite nice and smooth flowing, heltery skeltery if there's no traffic on it. We can cut the corners. And we're going to fly down this road. So our cadence should be picking up. We should have very little resistance because most of this bit's downhill, which is kind of nice. And um, we'll see what happens there. Is replying to her? No, I think Priyana probably has left us. I think we'll call that that her bike's jammed <laughs> and she has to go home, unfortunately. Oh, no. She says, yeah, it says our sound has completely disappeared. Oh, Where? no, I see a face. Huh. And I've messaged, huh. but no answer. So we're still riding along that road, and I'm going to turn on that recording of Metronome. Which I have shared, so I hope you can hear. Yeah. Perfect. So we're just riding nice and easy along. There's a really sharp right hand bend that you can't see round. So we've done that, paddling along. It's kind of a car and a half's width, so it's not too bad. Then there's a left one, and then we're paddling along again. And we're going to come to a tiny little downhill, so you don't need to go too fast, but we have to be careful because cars come up and it's like a blind slope, and nobody realizes they can't get through. So we're going to take the road there, and we're going to Go over a little bridge over the river and you can hear the river rushing because obviously it's been raining. Oh, and in the summer, that's where the crayfish live and you can see them in the summer, Ooh, but nice. not now because it's too deep. And that's where you can go and have um, picnics and sit on the side and throw the stones in and go for swimming and all that thing. It's not high enough, to deep enough to jump off the bridge though. So you've got over there. And then you turn right again onto a narrow back road, but that's often got dog walkers, so we just have to be nice and careful. Steady pace, but we're not going too fast in case there's dog walkers and kids and all those <laughs> things. And then if we see a tractor coming, we all have to scram the brakes on and dive into the hedge because it's narrow <laughs> enough that the tractor's a bit bigger than us. And we're now turning right. And we're going to start going what we call the back road to Staveley. So we've only done about two miles. And the back road is quite hilly. So we need to go down a little bit in our metronome. And there's a bit of a grind as we go up the hill. And we've done this bit before. So that should feel quite a hard resistance. And you don't get any warnings about how long these are. This is not too long, though. We're on the little back roads, and it's kind of up and down and up and down. And we're pulling up, and we've got wood on our left. And normally in the spring, this is a bluebell wood, so there's that lovely, sharp smell of bluebells. And the whole surface of the wood floor is just covered in blue, which is gorgeous. And there's a oh, gold It's lovely, isn't it? Also on the left, but there's never oh, anything really playing nice. golf. And we're going to shoot down the other side of this. But we haven't turned our gears over, so it's all of a sudden. Start going really quickly because we're going down the hill. And this is not very long. Nice back in. Hooray! We're a bit 
and then it's leveling out. So we're back to the 90 and we're still being relatively cautious and it's pretty smelly. There's some stables on the left. It's, uh, and then there's a bit of a bump and we're going past the end of the wood, which is often muddy. <laughs> there's a little dip, there's a hole on the left, so we pull right and avoid it. And then on the right hand side, there's a load of chickens, so you can hear them scrubbing and walking and stuff. Tick, 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 tick. Through the puddle, <laughs> past the sewage oh, hook, so hold your noses. <laughs> And then up again. So it's quite a small hill, but it's a bit steep. So we'll all stand up to get up there before we get too much interference from everyone. That's lovely, brilliant. Working away there. Up, 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 up. Oh. Oh. Nearly there. <laughs> I can see the top. <laughs> and you can see ice cream man at the top. Oh. Ice cream man at the top. No, not on this one, Liz. It's still only five <laughs> miles from home. <laughs> Go steeply down. There's a blind corner, so we're not going to pedal fast. We want to control our speed. Get round so we can see. And then off we go. Down the last bit of hill onto a lovely flat bit. And it's, we're coming into Staveley Village, so this bit's really popular. And there's a lovely little wider river on the left. So again, there's a weir, so you can hear the water. And the river is just burbling along. And we turn left over the bridge. And we turn sharp left again into the village. So we want to avoid all the hazards. And then we're going to turn right and get onto the cycleway. And I'm very sorry, you're going to lose all the cafes there. It's too near the beginning of our ride. Oh, it's nice oh. there. Nice cafes. It is nice there. But we're now going along the A590, which is the main road to Windermere. And we are on the cycle path. So we're safe. So we're spinning along at 90 quite happily. But there's loads of traffic noise. You can't really talk. We go past the farm where they sell really good lamb, past another stables where they sell Christmas trees in the winter. <laughs> and then we're going to turn right and we're going to start one of the first little climbs. So we've got our resistance and we've got our low cadence and we're going to take it up this hill. And there is a farm, but it doesn't really tend to have many animals or anything. I think it's just buildings, so that's not great for taking your mind off stuff. And we just need to keep plodding up. Still farmland, but not high enough to have fell yet. And there's a couple of bridleways coming off, which are pretty good on a mountain bike. They're not too rough. And we're going over into trout bet from Ings. And I don't know, I don't think Vision of Adventure normally go up over here. And Jill lives in Alverston, so it's quite a long hike for her. Okay, so we won't stress too much. We've got another little, tiny little bit till we get to the top. <laughs> And we're starting now to get some views into the lake. So we're just going to spin along nicely so your pilot can look at the view as well as the road. You'll have to actually do this ride one weekend. Yeah. yeah. I have to go vision and adventure. Can we do this ride? Can we do the yeah. track circuit? <laughs> So match what you've described. <laughs> and you will need some good legs to get up Kirkston. <laughs> Although this oh, yeah. is the Feel easiest up. side. So we're going along the top and then we start to go down. You could request it as a thing for next year on our... Yes. Yeah, on the I think that's come out at the minute. <laughs> 
Hide. Okay, we're going down, so we've picked up our cadence. Might have a little bit of a screech as we go down the right hand bend, just make sure it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> it obviously wasn't clear. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you fall off. <laughs> yeah. And there's a definite squeal of brakes as we stop or keep moving <laughs> but there's a horrendous junction where we have to be really careful we've come to a dead stop and we're turning right and so when we pull out we want to get some speed up so as we look for clear we then want to stand up and accelerate so three two one all clear stand up cross the road accelerate and get going pick your gears up brilliant and sit again and we're on a slightly wider road so we're going to go for 90 but we can afford to put a bit more oomph in so kind of that seven level out of ten effort so you're actually trying to really move along the road now it's clear enough to be safe it's too it's wide enough for two cars people can overtake us and we're going to spin past track back church, which has obviously a graveyard because it's a church, but it also has amazing daffodils in the spring. It's really nice. And there's some hedges, so you'll also get a hawthorn and the smell of that coming out, which can be a little bit, it's not as bad. Sometimes it's a little bit sickly-ish, but it's not as bad as a horse, which is really thick. That's great. We're celebrating that nice chance to just open our legs out a little bit. But we are going to come to the big grind. Go so in your heads, mentally get ready. We're definitely going for the 60. And we've hit the hill. Now, this is a lovely hill, and it's a brilliant one for climbing like this. So your resistance wants to be fairly high. You want to feel your glutes. You want to feel your backside working. You want to feel your quads working. And this hill, I'm going to try and check just the distance of it. But it's one of the longer climbs you'll get in Britain. What's the hill uh, called, sorry? Kirkston Pass. Okay. Uh, it is quite famous. There's three different ways to go up it. It's part of the Fred Whitten route, which is a famous, very, very, very hilly and unpleasant. No, beautiful, stunning, but very challenging <laughs> bike ride. Um, and it's one of the less steep hills on that, but it's still a big pull. I think I've got solo bike years ago. It would be quite, um, I'm looking for how long it is. It's coaxing past difficult to drive. The steep, twisty road is totally paved, but curvy, narrow, and very steep, hitting a harsh 17% of maximum gradient through some of the ramps. Keep in low gear. <laughs> Due to its steepness, it was traditionally known as the struggle. Okay, so they've taken a steeper one, but we can struggle. We're going to struggle and we'll be fine. <laughs> Is it scary? It's one of the most haunted roads in the world. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to find out more about... Um, more about if it goes with some cyclists that never made it. I yeah, was gonna say which exactly. ghosts live in it. Doesn't actually it must do somewhere, but I can't find it easily. Tell me how long, but it is quite long. Uh, it takes about 
20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes probably, to 20 minutes to cycle up it at a steady pace. So, and it's not desperately steep, despite what it says on that, uh, this way. But if you come up from Ambleside, it is desperately steep. Now, the, the Ambleside route, so the steep one, was the site of the National Hill Climb Challenge this year. They closed its traffic and there were like 500 cyclists set off oh. at like one minute intervals to see who could climb it the fastest. And the whole top of it was like being in Belgium. It was just covered with people with cowbells and shouting and in the middle of the road cheering people oh. on. Uh, quite intimidating in a way, but also quite exciting. Um, so one of my friends wrote it. She said, I thought you'd entered. That's the only reason why I entered. Like, no, 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 no. I've got more, far more sense than that. I'm not entering. <laughs> okay, so we're coming around the last bit. We're navigating the sheep, which is in the middle of the road, which is fairly common here. And we're going up the last pole. So just keep that power going out. And the views are opening up to be amazing. Lovely. That's which triathlon is it that doesn't struggle twice? Oh, I can't remember what it's. Is it, was it X triathlon? Would it be X? Yeah, okay. But it was the shorter one because they do one that goes way over like rhinos and stuff, don't they? The, the full one does the Fred Quinton route on, on the bike leg. Oh, hideous. Um, <laughs> I think they did a, a, a short kind of standard, but it wasn't a standard, and that was the struggle twice, which I rode. Yeah. But it was as a race, it was impossible because you came back on the A590, and the, it was just queued into Ambleside, so you couldn't ride. Oh, okay. Um, and that's the only year that I, that I know that they did it. We're coming up to the top. So the cadence is picking up, the pressure's releasing, the, the resistance can come off a little bit. And we're passing the Kirkston Inn on our right. Yeah. And they charge you for a glass of water because they are really? water right? They well, pay for it, so kind of fair enough, although it makes people quite upset. And then we're going to go down the other side. So we'll go for 90 and have a rest. <laughs> Although I think the idea of going down the other side on the tandem here scares me rigid. You might have to find somebody else if you're going to do it. <laughs> I don't mind my legs hurting going up, but it's very steep, quite twisty, and the road surface currently was terrible. So they've resurfaced going up the way, but I'm not sure they've resurfaced going down. <laughs> Sounds about right. So cyclists will quite often go faster than cars because the cars get very, very nervous about the bends, even more so than the cyclists. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, uh, ears and eyes peeled for stray sheep because they are a kind of standard hazard and we desperately need to avoid them. <laughs> Uh, we're kind of flying down there, but under control. And then we're hitting the bottom bit and we're picking cadence up again. Whee! So there we are at the nice whoosh bit, certainly. It's definitely. Spinning <laughs> along, celebrating the fact Woo -woo! that we Woo! Feeling great. <laughs> Brother's water on our left. And you're probably not even aware of it. It's slightly off the road. I've never swum in it. I need to do that at some stage. But um, people don't swim in it very often, but there's no reason why not. And we're chugging along towards Glen Ridding. Well, there must be a tea shop. There's that nice hotel there, isn't there? Um, yeah. Glen Riggin. I've read about it. There is, yes. You're right. Can't know it's called. But, so as the road steadies off, 
we'll just drop back to 90. But now we do want to have that resistance, so it's a kind of seven effort level. You're at, you've been cycling nearly for half the session time, so if you're thinking I'm not working hard enough here, you can judge your own resistance. But try and keep that cadence, put more resistance on if you want. It's a good road, it's quite undulating. And what we're going to do is wave at the tea shops. Sorry, guys. Woo! Um, through Baddell, we've had the hotel and not that much else. The shop. No tea shops that I know of. And we're going to drift through there, keeping it up. We're coming down into Glenridding. We can see the steamers on our right and we can hear some of them. We can hear the old horn and engine noises. And they um, go up Ullswater from this point, Glenridding Pier. There's a few sailing boats around. And the town is, village is quite congested. There is a tea shop away up on the left. Quite good last time I went, but onwards. Mm. Sorry. Keep mm -hmm. going. And we're going out of there, up and down along the lakeside. And so here there's geese and ducks. And there's people crossing the road to take pictures because they don't remember they have to look. So we'll just be quite aware. <laughs> and this is a really lovely place just to get that pace going. Keep just clocking out that nice rhythm. The road is wide and the whole way along, we're along Oldswater, which is about eight miles long, the swim of it. Um, it's an interesting lake. It has a right angle bend ish halfway up it and i've sailed on it a lot and the winds are always very very swirly and partly because of that right angle it all gets churned around and it's a nice lake i like old water i've done quite a lot of swim leading in it it forms part of the frog witten which is when you swim in lots of lakes and cycle in between them but it's a bit of a um, juggle of gear because you shouldn't really take a wetsuit out of one lake and then put it in another without washing it. So you need to have lots of friends that you can borrow five wetsuits from. <laughs> and then you need somebody nice enough to spend the whole day driving around the Lake District carrying <laughs> them and your food. Is that right? You're not allowed to use the same wetsuit in the same lake, uh, different yeah. lakes? Yeah, yeah it's okay. good practice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you swim, you should always wash your wetsuit in fresh water afterwards right. and dry it thoroughly, which and then which will take most of the invasive spores off it because mm. you can transfer um, species from okay, one yeah. to another. Yeah. Um, and that's why, yeah, people can get quite upset. There's some over on the west side, is it? Derwent water's got quite a lot of an invasive species and right. there is a try there, but you have to rinse your wetsuit before you're even allowed to take it out of transition as part of the environmental race. Really? Yeah. So, so we're going along there and some of you have heard of Colin Hill, who is an amazing long distance swimmer. Um, he has a place called Oswater Place just on our right as we're going past. It's in the grounds of a hotel and it's a um, small endless pool with six cameras. There's nothing like not being able to hide, I tell you. When you're in there with six cameras on you and you've got your swimsuit on and that's it. Like, whoa, this isn't good. And there's a mirror on the bottom and there's loads of bubbles coming out where the, the um, bloom comes out with the water. Um, but it's very interesting. And then he tells you exactly what, what you're doing. And then you go, no, 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 I can't possibly. And he goes, look at this video. And you go, okay. Uh, I can never lies. <laughs> yeah. So we want a big effort for about another three minutes. Same cadence. Put your resistance up because we're coming into Pooley Bridge in about three minutes where we are going to stop for coffee. So you need to get, yep, get your little cycling legs on. 
Yeah, it's really nice gin chop. There's a really nice gin chop with Bridge, isn't there? Uh, yes, there is. It's a really well stocked yeah. nice delicatessen. A really good one. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I have loads of gin. <laughs> but my favourite coffee stop is the one oh, it's got a garden. Just you come over the bridge into the village. And on the left hand side there's a coffee shop and it's got um terrace with outside seating just looking onto the river. So you can hear one, you can hear all the cars, but you can also hear the water. And then there's a car park on the other side. So there's usually you can hear people with their kids just like having fun and throwing stones and dogs being shouted at and jumping into the water to get sticks and stuff. Good. One time oh, no. I said in Pilly Bridge, it was biblical weather all weekend. Absolutely <laughs> oh, lucky about. And we were camping and walking. Oh, yeah. Where were you camping? Absolutely um, One of the campsites, just a couple of K along through by the near the lake. Got yeah, there's the one at Waterside, which has got camping on the lake shore. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is lovely if it's not biblical. Yeah, it was absolutely difficult. Did your tent get flooded? Uh, no, it was all right, actually. Hey! My oh. son learned to kayak in the, in a campsite just further up from there. At the same time. <laughs> because it flooded so badly, we just put him in the kayak and let him chase the pans down the campsite. They were all floating oh. like... Right, we're going through Pooley Bridge because you can't stop because we're sitting on here. And we'll pretend we've stopped. So you can take the resistance off a little bit because you know what it's like when you get going after a cafe. Legs are a bit heavy. Life's a little bit harder until you get going again. So you can pretend you're in a cafe like Di's doing and have a drink, move around your bike if you need to. We're about halfway through your session. Go for a wee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for a wee. <laughs> yeah, I came off on that road. That cafe was really good as I rolled in, asked for their first aid kit. Um, and then phoned Paddy and said, my glasses have been run over by a truck. I don't think I'm safe to cycle home. <laughs> <laughs> So he came and got me and he looked at me and he went, that's not the only reason why you shouldn't cycle home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad you've got me. <laughs> Luckily, it was only my glasses and it wasn't me. Oh. Otherwise, I would not be here now. There oh. you go. So... We're now going to. Sorry, Jill. Oh, someone's stolen my bike. I can't ride anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you don't want to ride up, Shaft. Come on. You can jump on the back of mine. Yeah. Well, Come, so, give us a yeah. croggy. <laughs> it's a lovely climb, Liz. You'll love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's windy up there as well. Is it windy? Yeah, Always windy. Windy. windy at the bottom, windy at the top. <laughs> Both. Always a headwind. Yeah, but we're going to turn right and go through some little roads first of all. So rather than um, this nice chugging along the main road with lots of space and a nice 90, we're going to need to pop <laughs> those short little hills again. So T's had time to go down. We're turning right. And we're standing and we're going to stand to get up this hill because it's a bit shorter and a little bit steeper. Ah, oh, well done. Like Molly looks like she's just standing. There seems to be a lack of pedalling. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have too many cakes? <laughs> too many scones? Too many scones. <laughs> Yay, good job. Keep it going. Lovely. What's the no, gradient? I I've got a gradient setting on this bike. Um, we'll call it about 18, Jill. What does that do? Oh. 
Because <laughs> sometimes they don't translate to normal. Like map deck, if you put it on gradient of three percent, everybody nearly falls over. Yeah, I'm on a gradient of nine, and I'm struggling. Right. Uh, oh yes, you are. Try six, die. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I better let you get to the top soon. <laughs> Emily's going. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Let me sit down. Okay, you yeah, sit and off you go. Don't waste all that energy though. So we want to cut to the top and just push on a little bit. Keep going. And I'm not going to put the um, metronome on because we're going to change quite a bit. We're going along and there's poppies along here and you can look straight across into the Pennines. Because we're coming away from the Lake District. So the landscape is a bit more rolling. And there's more crops. There's none of those pesky hill sheep about to leap out on you. And then we're turning around a little sharp corner and we're going down the hill. So spin your legs, pick your cadence up. A lovely bank it to the right. And now we're Any joining. cows? Sorry? Any cows? No, we don't have that all that many cows around. <laughs> we don't have like dairy farms because the land's not rich enough. Okay. <laughs> it tends to be raining. Yeah. So banking onto another road. <laughs> clear. Sorry. Keep going. It's a bit random, wasn't it? Sorry. It's a good question. We like prairie <laughs> cows. There are some fell cows, but you don't see that many of them really. There's an open air swimming pool in Askham though, We're just going past now. Right. So lots of kids with beach balls to relate. Uh, and then we're turning left and going down the hill again. So we need to pick up a cadence even more. Oh, going down towards Lyver Castle. Nice. Okay, ease off a little bit. There's a bridge and there's a left-hand turn along the flat. You can tell I've ridden this a few times. Oh. And we're going to need to stand again. So three, two, one, up, get. You get many snakes. <laughs> snakes. There you are get loads of snakes at Dolby Forest and what have you over here. Yeah. You get adders on the hill land and the bracken in the sun, but you wouldn't really find them on the road. No, of course Something, not, no. Something's gone wrong if you see them there. <laughs> but you'd see rabbits. <laughs> and possibly ferrets or weasels, not ferrets, weasels mm. don't like shoot across. Yeah. Okay, and sit, but you're still on the hill. So lower is low, Kate, keep pushing. You're on the steep bit, and it's still going up. And to the right is Lather Castle, which has all this amazing frontage and absolutely nothing behind it. It's virtually a ruin. And incredible gardens that they're doing. Uh, with lots of nice sculptures in, actually, now. They're doing a lot of work there. And my friends have just been and I wasn't here. So we're going to go again at some point. Uh, so keep pushing. You're kind of grinding up this hill. Quite a slow cadence. And we might get back in time for the end. We're doing all right. Okay, let's turn it back on to 90. It's evening out. So have a couple of minutes just spinning along at this. Get your breath back. Have a drink if you want. We're going to hit another main road. Well, not main. Actually, it is main, but it's just not, um, not that busy. It's not like the Windermere one. Right, that's as much of a rest. So we're turning right onto the main road and we've done like almost two thirds of the circle now. We're starting to go back south, back towards our house, but there's just a bit of a hill in the way. But not for a little while. And this is a lovely road, so we want to be in kind of chain gang 
format. So we're going to be in two lines and somebody's going to be at the front kind of towing everybody else because we're going to be behind each other. So we can use this bit of road for somebody to take the front and lead. And that means they have to put a little bit more effort in. Um, That's you, Liz. I, so the guys have to, happily smiling <laughs> at me. Well, the middle of my screen is Jill. Sorry, Jill. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. I'm just Don't go yet. I'm going to put a 30 second on it. <laughs> Are we just, um, what do you call it? When you get the site, I can't remember what you call it now. You think when well, I look for my clock. Uh, not drifting, what do you call it? You know where you're... Oh, drafting. Drafting. Job, Liz, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be drafting. So everyone drafting. That's, I can remember that word. My, oh. It's drafting. So you're sitting yeah. on the, just behind somebody. And the pilot is watching the body of the people in front, not the wheel, because that's hypnotic. It doesn't tell you anything at all. So, Jill, off you go. 30 seconds of going a little bit harder. You're leading us out. Go, Jill. Keep go, Jill. Guys, keep up. And then the rest of you are all, like, hanging on a coattails. Yeah. And then, Teresa, I can't see you, but you're going to take over. You got five seconds left, Jill. Three, two, one. Teresa, off you go. Thirty seconds, pulling. So if you're pulling properly, you probably need a rest. If you're really going for it, you've got an idea that it's going to take a while, and you can work as hard as you want. I like it. Fifteen seconds gone. So now I'm going to forget. Emily, you coming in next? Three, two, one. Teresa's dropped off. Emily's taken the lead. Over half of the path, and off we go. Lovely job. Everyone else is hightailing it behind you. Woo woo! <laughs> oh, that girl. Our right, last 10 seconds, Emily, go for it. Go, Emily! Three, two, one. Diana, pick it up. Off we go. Nice. Like the improved effort. Good job. Uh, Molly, you can go next. You've got 10 seconds. Lovely. Okay, die. Three, two, one. Pull out, drop back. Molly, take it away. <sighs> yeah, off she goes. Look at that pickup. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. She's going. <laughs> flying. She is. She's flying. Melt tea or beer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely job, Jimmy. Three, two, one. Give the gym a shock and take it away. Woo, woo. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Great. Here you going, all of you, or you drop off the back if you lose it. It's really hard to get back on again when you're doing this. It's impossible. Yeah. I'm hey, holding on to Jill. <laughs> Sue, get ready. Three, two, one. Sue from Scarborough, take it away. <laughs> Off we go. Woo, 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 woo. Get round to my house by the time you've got in front there. <laughs> yeah. Well, she'll pass the baton to you, Liz. You've got All 10 right. seconds. Get ready. She can stop in my garage for a while. <laughs> no, she can't. She's got to stay on the back. <laughs> Three, two, one, Liz. Lots of Woo -woo! talking. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and then the last section, Linda will take us away. But you've got 20 seconds yet, Liz. Keep going. <laughs> Liz. 
Loving it. That pressure on. Okay. Three, two, one. Linda. Your go. Yes. Oh, nice one. Great job. Hold on, Liz. Hi, thank you. No, I I'm think everybody's you again, had Jill. a go. <laughs> Fantastic, Linda. Keep it going. Leading us up. Come all the way through Shap and we're turning along past the cement works and the quarries. Lovely rural landscape that we have. Going past the bit of wall that the lorries always crash through when they forget to stop at the T junction. <laughs> we've done it so often they've now replaced it with a fence because it's cheaper. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. We're doing a bonus one. Keep going, Linda. I love it. Ten seconds. Lovely. Three, two, one. Okay, anyone who needs oh. to ease off and give yourselves a minute or two and have a drink, move around. As we come through the top bit of Shap, and that's a really wide open, quite bleak landscape we're in now, and there's always, as Jill says, a wind. So we're going to start going up a small hill and the start of climbing towards <laughs> Shap's summit. And, um, and we'll be in a headwind, obviously. That's always been at Scarborough. <laughs> yeah, you go all the way around this beautiful route, you're coming into the last 10 miles and you get a bit tired and it's just like, oh. <laughs> okay, bowling down into the dip. And then going to pull out the other side and walk about a 70. Getting sunburn. Lucky you. <laughs> when are we coming to the ice cream shop? No, we passed that in Pooley Bridge. Yeah. Nothing there. <laughs> we did stop there, you know, and the cafe sells the ice cream. Yeah. Only get one cafe stop a ride. And in this weather, <laughs> you don't get any because you get too far. <laughs> I threw a right strop on Saturday when Paddy stopped at a cafe. It's like, I'm cold, what are you doing? <laughs> so he fed me caffeine and gave me his coat and woolly hat, and I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't actually cold till we stopped. I don't know why I was like, yeah, I was very grumpy. Never mind. <laughs> and now we're just going up this little slope. And yes, if you're really lucky, you'll be getting sunburn and a bit of wind burn. And it's going to level out again. Coming up there, but sunny, it's lashing it down here. Yeah, it's lashing it down. <laughs> to, to go out in the rain to come here. And we've come up that little one. Whee! It'll be a bigger one. So we're on a nice bit of flat now. So if you're, you've got 10 minutes or so left, so if you're wanting a bit of a push on, you can do a resistance of about eight. If you're like, ooh, I've worked quite hard and my legs are tired and I'm going to hide behind somebody to get out of the wind, you can have a resistance of about effort level about six and see if they'll tow you home. Oh. And then you're just kind of resting in a little bit before we get to the last climb, which is not as steep as Kirkston. And it's actually, if there's no wind, it's actually a really nice climb. But when there is wind and you've cycled that far, it's just depressing. And the wind's probably always against you. Oh, always. It's one of the sods laws of cycling, Linda. <laughs> Even when you go out and it's in your face and you're going, oh, I'll have a tailwind coming home. Something happens, it turns around. No, that's exactly <laughs> that's what I said today. The wind never seems to be behind you, does it? No, never. <laughs> did that in the Southport 10K. It literally changed direction halfway around the race. Yeah. And it'll do that again when we race there in May. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. In May. <laughs> 
So we've had that bit of a break if you wanted it. And now we're definitely going for the last grind home. So it's that resistance job. And this is the last big hill. And the road has like two lanes on the side that we're on, so there's loads of space. It's usually not very busy. The cars are not that much of an issue. And it used to be that used to be an issue. It used to be the main road into Scotland. And all the lorry drivers in bad weather used to get stuck on the tops. And there's a memorial up there. And now you've got the M6. And there's a tiny little, I don't know what it used to be, maybe an electric substation or something. It's now a tiny little bothy that will fit very few, few people, two or three people in, right on the top. So this should feel like a slog because it always is a slog. <laughs> Excellent work. We're getting there. We're getting there. Rounding the big wide corner and just grinding up towards the summit. <laughs> Nice job. See, it kind of this is like climbing in the Alps. You quite, if you ride in the Alps, the hills go on forever, like 12, 14 kilometers of just constant. Oh, but it's all on quite a nice gradient, so you are climbing, but it doesn't feel like the end of the world half the time. At the chairlift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do now. Put the bag yeah. in the bag of the lift and down you come. Down hill. Oh, no. Good job. Coming up to the top. And we're going over three, two, one. Ease the pressure on those legs. We'll take it to 80. We're a bit sloppy when we're tired. And we're going to see you in a minute or two. We're coming across the flat summit, which is quite flat. Kind of plateau, little plateau. And then we're going to dive down the side. And then there's one little steep pull before we hit the homeward wobbly bit. Is that the hill before your house? <laughs> Yeah, it's still about five miles from my house. Oh, yeah. um, comes down into Little Borodell. There's a Borodell that's better known in the north of the lakes near Keswick, but this is, and it's absolutely amazing in um, hay meadow time. About June, July, they have fields and fields of, of wild <laughs> hay meadows, and the smell is just amazing, and there's just all these beautiful flowers. It's lovely. What's Paddy got cooked for tea for us then? Um, he's gone to the gym, so I think we're having a Who <laughs> finishes first? <laughs> what is the elevation profile on here? We've gone up an awful lot more than we've gone down. <laughs> <laughs> we're currently at about 200 metres and we started at zero. You have to remember, oh, that's very accurate. You have to remember that it always takes <laughs> much, much longer to go uphill than come down. <laughs> We're now I'll shooting the profile down. later. Mm. I'll send you the elevation profile. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> well, you know, you should be going down quite quickly, and there's one bit to be nervous of because the wind comes through some gaps in the rocks and always blows you sideways. So, it's, if it's very windy, it's quite a tetchy descent. There's two big brain covers. On these bikes, you can't really go down. You can get set up to go downhill, but your legs go out of control if you do. So <laughs> it's not really. I tend not to. 
But, well, in real life, you shoot down into this dip going really fast. You can go really, really, really fast if you want to, but I'm too nervous. And then it's bottoms out and you know what's coming next. There's a last steep climb up, which is definitely a standing job because we want to make the most of it and get home. So up you go. Last little push. If you're not up already, three, two, one, up, and we're going for home. Last little climb. Well done. Nice job pulling around the corner. And then, woo! Push! Yeah, wee! And then it's kind of gradually down back to my house until we turn up the horrible little bit that goes straight up to my house. But we won't do that because it's the end of a long ride. <sighs> so we've just got the last five minutes just to enjoy that slightly downhill road. <sighs> a nice steady 90 spinning the legs out relatively easily. Past the village hall for no village, parish hall, I guess. And they have pub once a month and they do an annual breakfast. They have loads of stuff in it. <laughs> Lovely, and most of you should be feeling a bit tired, a bit sunburnt, a bit ready for a cup of tea or a beer. Lovely. Now, have we got any special requests for the last session? I thought oh. we were going to deliver the Easter eggs. Right. Yeah. I will see what I can do with Easter eggs. <laughs> and Easter bunnies and... That is the end of the class recording. Complete your cool down until your heart rate and body temperature have returned more comfortable levels. This recording will continue for a further 5 minutes to help you complete your cool down. There will be no audio sound until the end of the 5 minute period. The next class is on the 27th of February, 2024. We hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you from Vision of Adventure.
That is the end of the cool down period. Well done on completing the fitness class brought to you by Vision of Adventure. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to be notified when the next video is ready or to come back and repeat this class another time.